Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devview.com. Now, many of the types of applications that you'll build as a C-sharp developer will require you to work with text, whether you're formatting the text for display to the end user or whether you're manipulating the text in some way. Like a good example would be whenever you are massaging data. And that's a term that developers use to talk about taking data from a file or a database and it's in some raw form and you need to manipulate it. You need to remove certain characters, you need to add certain characters in certain positions in order to get it and prepare it for ingestion to be used by some other software system or to be saved in a different file format, whatever the case might be. So manipulating data is a key skill, whether for display or for the sake of massaging data into the right format. Format. Furthermore, whenever you're working with the string data type, uh, you're working with a data type that can hold a lot of information. So to extend the bucket analogy, you're working with a really big bucket. And when you're working with big buckets, you have the responsibility of working with them in an efficient way because when you're working with uh, data that takes up a lot of, of memory, it requires a lot of processing power. Uh, you are putting a strain on system resources. Now, admittedly, it would take a lot of string manipulation to slow down a computer, especially a modern computer. However, as software developers, we want to do things efficiently, and so it's important to understand that there are tools in the .NET Framework class library that will help us work with and manipulate strings in a very efficient way. So that's really the purpose of this lesson, to show you how to perform some simple string manipulations, like inserting special characters into your literal strings, formatting strings, especially numbers and dates and things of that nature, uh, manipulating strings, changing things about strings, searching for items and removing them or replacing them with something else in strings, and then also working with strings in a more efficient way. So as you can see, I've already taken the liberty of setting up a, a new console window project called Working with Strings. Please take a moment, pause the video, and catch up with me. And I've already added three lines of code that we'll use to demonstrate some key manipulations for our strings. And so what I'll wind up doing is just typing in a string and then showing you some manipulation and then moving on to the next line. Uh, but at any rate, let's go ahead and start by talking about the special nature of the backslash character, which is that character there. I always used to get my characters confused. That's forward slash, that's backslash, okay? So a a uh, backslash character can be used to escape or insert escape sequences into literal strings. This will allow us to do things like put special characters, insert line feeds, and things into a literal string. So for a good example of this, what if I wanted to type something ironic like my so-called life, right? And I wanted to, rip, to, to insert a series of double quotes around the word so-called so that it displays the way that I would as the author of this expected to be displayed on screen. Now unfortunately you can see that the uh, that the Visual Studio on behalf of the dot, uh, the C Sharp compiler doesn't like this at all. Uh, it, it thinks that you have two literal strings here, the word my and life, uh, and in between something that it can make no sense of whatsoever, the word so or the term so, a minus symbol, and then the word called. Uh, these aren't these are not uh, variables that have been declared. It doesn't recognize them as keywords. So C Sharp does not like this. In order to insert a special character like a double quote to say, I don't want this to delineate a literal string. I want to use this inside of my literal string. I'll use the backslash character before each double quote, which escapes out the double quote and makes it available for use inside of the literal string itself. So now when we run the application, we can get double quotes inside of our side of our string. Okay. Now similarly, let's go ahead and my string equals, and I tell you what, I'm just going to copy this to my clipboard so I can keep using it. Alright, so now what if I needed to add a new line? So what if I need 
a new line. And I want to split this up into, onto two separate lines in my application. What I can do is insert a new line character. So think of a line feed slash n will create a line feed. Uh, and let's go ahead and run the application and you can see that it's smart enough to know that even though we didn't separate with uh, spaces around the word a uh in new, it was still able to find that that escape character for the uh, for the line feed and represent it correctly in our literal string. All right. Now you might say, well, that's all well and good, but what if I need to actually use the backslash character? Uh, so, for example, in an instruction to go to your C colon slash drive and you'll notice that we get a red squiggly line underneath the backslash because it's expecting us to use the backslash as an escape character as an escape sequence but we've given it nothing after that to to indicate which escape sequence we want to use so in this case we have two options uh, in fact in all these cases we have two options we can use uh, another backslash character to escape out of it to represent this correctly so now you can see that you should go to your C colon backslash drive. Or what we can do, and I'll just do this again, go to your C drive. So what we can do is add a at symbol in front of the literal string, and that tells C sharp that we want to use our backslash characters as true backslash characters, not as uh, not as escape sequences, all right, or special characters. All right, so let's move on from there. And we've already talked about the use of string.format, and we showed how we could do something like this, where we are going to insert the words first and second into this template and the template contains a number of replacement codes and the number inside the replacement code corresponds to which argument is passed in to the string.format uh, uh, as input parameters. So let's run the application and we would get what you might expect first equals second. What I didn't tell you at the time was that you can actually reuse uh, the replacement code multiple times like so or you can use them in a different order if you like whoops let's go back and change up the order where the second will be the first item displayed and the first will be the second item displayed like so all right furthermore the replacement code has some special powers and for example if we want to do a string dot format and say for example that we wanted to display currency to the end user so I want to display hundred and twenty three dollars and forty five cents to my end user uh, now in my case since my computers culture is set to English US this will be represented as dollars and cents but if you if your culture is, uh, if your country and culture codes are set to, for example, English UK or some other language and some other culture, you would probably see something different whenever you choose uh, to, to do this. You'll see your native uh, country and culture's symbols for currency. But to create and format values for currency, you use the colon and then C immediately after the numeric replacement code. So in this case, I'm using, say, zero still represents the first item in the list, but the colon C says I want you to format it like currency, all right? So that when we run it, at least on my computer, you'll see dollars and cents, okay, with the dollar symbol. Now there's all sorts of these little uh, these little variations on this. So for example, what if I wanted to just display a really long number to an end user, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and I want it, I want it to look like a number, not just like 
how I have it here, where you can't really tell, is that what, 12 billion or 123 million or what? To refuse, to, to remove the confusion, what you can do is use the colon n format character. And this will add in decimal points and commas to give you the appropriate uh, formatting for a large number. So 1,234,000,000 and so on. Okay. All right, furthermore, continuing that same thought, what if we were to go string.format and we wanted to represent a, uh, a value as a percentage? So what if I wanted to display this as a, whoops, as a percent? Let's make sure you get those formatting codes in there. And just to show there's nothing on my sleeve here, let's so, uh, uh, let's just call this percentage, like so, and then we will insert a percentage here uh, at this replacement code. Let's go ahead and run the application, and you can see that the percentage is 12.3% in this case. Right. And finally, the last one I'm going to show you, but I'll show you where you can find more information, is how to create a custom format. So for example, in the United States, phone numbers have a very specific way that they're presented to uh, uh, present it. So um, let's go string.format and uh, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. And I want that displayed like a phone number. So I would use zero and then I'm going to use uh, pound symbols to represent each digit that I want formatted. So in this case um, actually I'm going to use parentheses around the first three numbers because that's usually how an area code in a phone number in the United States is presented. Then a space, then three more numbers, then a dash, then four more numbers. All right, That's just how phone numbers are presented in the US. So let's go ahead and run the application now. You can see that it, in fact, formats that number the way that I would expect. Now let me throw one little monkey wrench in this. What if I were to supply too many extra digits? I added another one, two at the very end, and yet I don't have that accounted for in my formatting. Where will it be presented? Well, as you can see, it pushes out the area code to five digits instead of just three. So the moral of the story there is that the formatting will go from right to left whenever you're using custom pound symbols to, to create a custom um, format for a, uh, a numeric value. So again, the, the numbers will push their way out, and once you get to the very end, it will just put as many numbers as it can uh, on that very first character and push that formatting out uh, to the left. So just be aware of that. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is start manipulating strings in a more meaningful way. Up to this point, we've just been formatting strings, but what if I want to actually change some things about the strings themselves? Uh, let me start by um, providing a little something that we can sink our teeth into and work with. And so I'm going to type in a lyric from a song that I like. Uh, all right, and notice that I added, or I left in an extra space here at the very beginning of the string, and then I left in two spaces at the very end of that string. All right, and so let's uh, go my string equals my string, and I think the most important thing you want to realize about when you're working with these data types is that they do have built-in functionality that were provided to us by Microsoft. So, for example, the, every string has this substring helper method that we can use to just say, hey, I want to start at a specific point and then grab all of the characters within a given range. So I can say, start at position six and grab me back everything after position six. So when I run the application, you can see it starts with the word summer, which is at the sixth position, and grabs everything to the very end of that, that line. So here is position one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it truncates off the first 
six characters and starts me there and I'm pulling everything else giving me a subset of the strings from that point on. But I can also say, go ahead and give me uh, just the next 14 characters after that. So don't give me everything to the very end of that string. Just give me the next 14 characters, and so I can isolate just a couple of, of, of characters. In this case, just three words in that string. All right. Uh, I can also do something like uh, my string dot, whoops. Uh, to upper, and that will actually do that, and that will do just what you might think it will. It'll make everything uppercase. Great. What if I wanted to replace one character with a different character? So my string dot replace, and say find every blank space and replace it with a double dash, like so. Right, so now when we run the application, you can see that we get double dashes instead of our spaces. It makes it more obvious that we had some spaces at the beginning and the end. All right. We can also um, equals my string dot remove, and we can remove a number of characters uh, from our string. So instead of uh, instead of just Selecting out the substring of characters, we took threes. We can actually remove those entirely from the string. And you can see, um, or I'm sorry, summer we took, it has been removed from the string completely. And also, what if we were to want to uh, actually remove those trailing and and preceding spaces, we could use the trim method. So let's do my string equals first of all string dot format. And here I'm going to grab the length of the string just to kind of demonstrate this. The before length. So and then the after length. So let's go my string dot length and then my string dot we'll call the trim method to strip off all of the all the extra spaces in the beginning and the end or I could just choose to trim off only the ending spaces or just the beginning spaces but I'm going to call the trim method to get rid of it all and then determine what the length of the string is at that point. So you'll recall that we used the length property whenever we were working with the array to find out how many items were in the array. We can also use the length property on a string to tell us how long the string is. So that's ultimately what we're doing here. Tell me how long the string is uh, before we make any changes to it, and then after we trim off those extra spaces, how long is the string itself? Let's run the application again. And so you can see that the before was 46, the after was 43. We trimmed off three spaces. Great. All right, the last thing I want to do is talk about the uh, working with strings in a more efficient sort of way. And for example, let me just type in a really quick code example here. Um, so we'll just do this console. Well, actually, here, my string plus equals. Okay, and hopefully you remember what this operator was for, where we're saying, give me whatever the value of a string is and concatenate everything on the right hand side to it. So here we're concatenating on just double dashes and then the current value of i as we loop through a hundred times. And uh, we'll merely then just display my string in the console window. Whoops. And let's go ahead and um, actually get rid of that. And we'll start here with a blank slate. All right, so let's run the application. And the output isn't all that interesting. It's just a printout of numbers with some dashes in there. But what's going on behind the scenes is the more interesting part of this. Uh, what happens when you're working with the string data type is that it's called a 
immutable data type, meaning that you can't just add more values to it. What happens behind the scenes is there's this little dance that the .NET Framework runtime is, is performing to make it look like you're still working with the original variable my string, so the original bucket. But what it does is it creates a second bucket and it starts copying things over. In this case, it copies the previous value of my string plus any of the new stuff we want to put in there and it creates this new string in a new bucket and then it removes the old bucket and it gives the new bucket the name my string. Then we say, let's do it again. In fact, let's do it 100 times. And it has to go through that dance 100 times in order to produce the, uh, the final result that we're printing then in our console window. And as you can, you can see, that's a very inefficient way. Uh, and we're requiring a lot of the runtime, a lot of memory management that, that uh, might put a drain on the system if we were to do a lot of it. So instead, what we can use is a different, uh, a different data type. Whenever we're going to manipulate strings in this way, where we're going to do a lot of string concatenation or a lot of string manipulation, we can use something called a string builder. So again, just like I said with the random class from the previous video, this may not make a whole lot of sense at first, uh, but hopefully, uh, once I talk about what classes are and how to create new instances of classes, this nomenclature that uh, string, my string builder, my string equals new string builder, what is that all doing? We'll talk about that very soon. But just let's create a new string builder class and then we're going to do something very similar to what we did before where we will iterate through 100 times, but this time, instead of just doing a simple concatenation, we're going to use an append method, which is a more efficient way to append additional information to this string builder object rather than going through the previous uh, step of, of forcing the, uh, the, the runtime to create all these temporary versions of string. So uh, my string append i and the result will look identical. But what's going on under the hood is that we're working with strings in a more efficient way. So use the string builder along with the append method of the string builder to, uh, to work with strings in a very efficient manner. Okay, so we talked about quite a bit in a very short amount of time how to work with the backslash character for escaping and inserting escape characters, special characters into our literal strings how to use string.format. In fact, let me show you this little page here for standard numeric string formats. Um, if you just search for this on bing.com, you'll be able to find this article, and it gives you examples and many other usages uh, for uh, the format that we looked at uh, several examples of here. We looked at several of the built-in helper methods to replace or define subsections or completely remove or actually create two upper or two lower to change the case of strings and then finally how to work with strings in a more efficient manner okay so uh, now we're going to give the same treatment to dates and times because you'll again find yourself working with dates and times frequently whenever you're building applications and there's a lot of similar kind of functionality there as well we'll see in that next lesson thank you